It's the place where senior living insights and entertainment collide, like two star-crossed lovers meeting at a polka dance. This is the Bellwether Senior Living Podcast, hosted by Jeff Bell of Bell PR and Marketing. Senior Living Marketers, put your hands together for the host with the most. Okay, maybe not, but he tries. Jeff Bell. Thank you, Tom, as always, for the fun introduction. Uh, I'm Jeff Bell, CEO, founder of Bell PR Marketing. We're back on the Bellwether Senior Living Podcast, and I'm excited. Um, I'm always excited about our guests, but I'm particularly excited today because I always like to hear those stories of um, how people founded companies as someone who founded a company myself, and also how people ended up in this wonderful field uh, that we're all so passionate about called senior living. And so uh, I've got the founder of Will Gather with me, uh, Nicole Will, and you can learn more at willgather.com, www.willgather.com. And we'll gather a little bit about them. And of course, Nicole will go into way more detail uh, than I will, but uh, they are dedicated to enhancing the well-being of the aging community by equipping older adults, family caregivers, elder care professionals with valuable information and, and resources. So Nicole Will, welcome to the Bellwether Podcast. Hi, Jeff. Thank you so much for having me. I've been looking forward to this conversation. Well, you and I first connected um, through a uh, mutual friend and client um, who's doing all sorts of exciting things in San Antonio. And James Lee, um, for those of you who listen regularly, was a guest on the podcast, um, one of our first guests, actually. Uh, it has an amazing story to tell uh, about what they're doing in the field of dementia, uh, dementia care in the San Antonio area. So I want to hear your story um, as well, Nicole. Tell me, I guess, first of all, um, a little bit about Will Gather and tell me a little bit about your story. Yeah, thank you. I know first James Lee is wonderful. I mean, he's a dear friend and I'm so glad that you're highlighting his work as well. Oh, he's amazing. Yeah, uh, he really is. He is. He is. Well, yeah. So my background really, I think my two worlds sort of collided in a way. I grew up with my grandma moving into our home when I was 15 years old. So we moved houses to accommodate grandma moving in and lived life with her. She was one of my best friends. Uh, she heard all about everything I was doing in high school. You know, in some ways it was almost like having a third parent. But <laughs> grandma was always a fun grandma and we could share and build this relationship in a really cool way. And at the same time, I was discovering what I wanted to do and knew I wanted to work with people. I ended up starting more in nursing. And when I was doing that in that program, you become a nursing, registered nursing assistant. So I was working in a nursing home at the time. And then I really started to see, oh my goodness, there's a whole field out here working with older adults. Decided to switch my degree to social gerontology, human services, and never looked back. I ended up working out of college in a large, well-respected community here in the Twin Cities, uh, started on their transitional care unit, which I loved. It gave me this really great clinical foundation and worked my way up, ended up being the director overseeing multiple departments and loved it, thought I would never leave, and then decided, you know, I actually want to have a bigger voice and life. I had little kids at the time. And as we know, senior living 24 seven demanding, and I wanted to bring information and resource that I had access to being in this world of senior living to families and older adults that have questions and, and want to be informed. And really we do that with our podcast which is navigating the world with their aging loved one. I feel like families are empowered when they have information and our podcast really amplifies and elevate and elevates initiatives, support and resources that are happening in the care economy. So we interview experts, CEOs, founders, authors, educators, thought leaders, that are doing incredible work to encourage and give support and practical tools to families so that they can navigate that aging journey with their loved ones for this meaningful and fulfilled life. 
Another part of our business is called Gigi Betty Co. by Will Gather. And that is a boutique gift shop for family caregivers and care partners. We donate part of those proceeds back to families, specifically with nonprofits that are uh, providing respite care and retreat and support. And so Gigi Betty is named after my grandma, who we called Gigi Betty. So supporting families through information and product and resource and encouragement. I love it. I love it. And what uh, what an empowering uh, resource for families. And also really just one of those things that I'm sure at the end of the day, you feel like you are continuing to put good back out there into the world in an industry that frankly can be quite confusing and overwhelming for people. It, it is one of the biggest decisions people will ever make what to do uh, when they reach a point where they need additional care for themselves, for a loved one. Um, what, what have you... Um, what have you learned um, since you sort of dove into this uh, in, into this whole endeavor? Uh, what what do maybe people not know are some of the most important challenges that families are facing now, and the most important questions they're asking? Yeah, that's so true. Families really need support and information, and so we've kind of identified that as these like four pillars of support, I like to call them. So that caregiving care partnership, those family dynamics, learning about Alzheimer's, dementia, the care technology, age tech, how do we improve that quality of life and care through technology? Families are having questions about legal, financial, uh, all of those components that go into making decisions as we grow older. And then a large conversation that's happening is how do we take care of ourselves? So that wellness piece, how do we address that burnout, that overwhelm that can happen when we're, when we're constantly, you know, caring for other people, there can be quite, um, quite a burden on, on the families as they're trying to not only discover what's out there, where, where do we go, who can help us? But we also know that it can be financially taxing and also taxing on our health. You know, the data is there's 53 million unpaid family caregivers. And so the amount of hours, I think it's like on average 20 hours of care per week that they're providing and giving of their time. It impacts their mental and physical health. You know, a lot of the stats on is that the caregiver's health gets worse due to caregiving, which is unfortunate. Yeah, and so how do we, job. oh my gosh, yes. How do we, how do we support that? And um, it impacts their employment. You know, 61% of caregivers report having to make work accommodations due to their caregiving responsibilities. So we know that it's impacting really every facet of life. And a lot of families don't identify as a family caregiver. So what's been really cool to see is more of the language and the conversation happening in our ecosystem here of how do we support families? What is a family caregiver? It's really anyone that's stepping in, whether you're long distance, whether your loved one lives in senior living, that you're providing some sort of care and support, whether it's financial, checking in, maybe more hands-on. So families, I believe, really want to be seen and heard and listened to and supported with all of those big questions. And I think the big questions are, uh, where are we going to live or what does aging look like as we grow older? The different dynamics with that. What are some of those questions around uh, legal documents, having your financial uh, paperwork in order, or just even the conversation around it. Yeah. And then understanding the healthcare and navigating all of those decisions that we need to make. And there are so many, um, tell, tell me about the boutique. Cause that, 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 that is a great, um, idea. It's sort of fascinating to me. What kind of items? Do you yes. Oh, so we started with jewelry primarily. And the reason behind the boutique is that there are so many different products that let caregivers, let's say a tool that assists them in their caregiving. But I really wanted something to bring awareness 
and support for families. That was a beautiful gift of reminder of, I see you, I know you're working hard. Um, I'm celebrating you. And it's meant to be a thoughtful gift. That's beautiful. Cause I believe they have this on our website. Caring is beautiful. And the challenges we face as a family, how we overcome them, having that community of support. And those experiences are really meant to be shared. And so if we can send that reminder, that tangible reminder, I'm a gift giver, you know, it's named after my grandma. She was such a fashionista and loved beautiful things. And I think that we can be thoughtful in showing our love. So whether you are a caregiver, whether you love a caregiver, whether you've been one, um, that when we show that support and when we come together, that as a collective, and I say this, you know, we are a powerful force for good when we can do that. So uh, we have jewelry, we've got necklaces, birthstone necklaces. As a reminder, I've sent it as a gift for someone that lost their mom who they cared for with dementia of her birthstone. And I, she emailed me the other day and was like, I wear it and I think of her all the time. So, yeah. And we have those connections. Um, everyone talks about the connections with their children, which of course they have, but we also have connections with those older adults in our lives that are just as meaningful and special. And to your point, those, those gifts, um, either encourage a caregiver or in some cases they provide um, some level of memory of someone who's maybe no longer with us. Um, and, and so that that is, I don't think the, the, um, the sentimental importance of that can really be overstated. Right. Yes, it's so true. And I also feel that we I know when I'm purchasing things in the world, I love when something has a story or meaning behind it. It makes me more connected to, to what I'm buying or, or what I'm purchasing. And so, you know, expressing that to our families is that there's meaning and there's give back and there's purpose and in, in what we're doing to try to move that cause for family caregivers forward and, you know, in the little ways that I can do that. So. Yeah. So kind of kind of going back to the to the beginning of the you kind of gave me a little bit of your uh, of your entry into the world of senior living when you were, I don't know, in high school or maybe even younger. Did you ever see yourself in this field um, or are you like most of us who are like, yeah, never in a million years did I think this is where I would be, but I love it. Yeah. You know, maybe a little bit of both. I've always been an old soul. So there's part of that. I've always been drawn to older adults. I remember like leaving a friend play date and when I would go like hang out with <laughs> an older person and just have conversation. And my mom was really great about, we had an older neighbor and then she moved to a nursing home and we would go play Yahtzee with her. And so my exposure to it uh, was probably uh, foreshadowing of my future. I didn't know that there was the field of gerontology or working with older adults till I was a little bit older. And once I discovered that, then I was like, oh, this totally makes sense of what I'm supposed to be doing, what I'm supposed to be doing. So, yeah. so how long, um, how long has Will Gather been going and what's on the horizon? What do you see next? What would you like to do in terms of, we're always trying to think of ways, I think, to grow, to expand, to change, yeah. to evolve. What's, what's, what's on your horizon? Yeah, that's a great question. So Will Gather, the podcast has been, gosh, we're going into the third year. Uh, we launched Gigi Betty at the end of last year. So that's fairly new. I, the future holds, uh, as we grow the podcast, we know we're making a difference with our reach and with the numbers that we have. So what's been really fun to see is that we've got, uh, we've made the Apple charts in you know, numerous countries. We're in the top 15% shared globally via Spotify. And also just learned we're in the top 10% of podcasts out of the 3 million globally via listen score. So when I know and when I see the numbers, I know that there's this audience that is hungry for information. So uh, being booked into the fall already with guests, I just foresee more sharing information and more stories. The future will hold partnering with probably some strategic partners as we grow sponsorship to monetize the podcast so we can have bigger reach and impact. And also I foresee 
another part of the backstory is my dad is a documentary filmmaker. And so I grew up witnessing him interview and tell stories with, um, you know, professors and educators and um, incredible people. And so I know that film will probably be in the future at some point as I evolve the storytelling to share really meaningful and impactful work uh, more in the film space as I am so fortunate to have access to, you know, having a father that's dove into that and has done that really well. Um, so that's exciting to see that happen and grow the products and gifts that we sell with Gigi Betty Co. We've got some things in the works. So more ways to connect with your loved one, uh, with the older adult in your life and supporting those families. So just more growth of what we've kind of built the foundation over those few years and then uh, stepping out and I'm speaking more nationally and providing education. And really my latest calling I feel has been to uh, bring senior living more into the conversation around family caregiving and why it's so important that we have an understanding of what's going on in the care economy, how we can support family caregivers and be that guide. I feel like senior living is this perfect guide, um, but families don't necessarily view them as that until that event or crisis, until they need to make that move. So starting to more have that awareness and develop that conversation around bringing senior living and family caregivers together. So I love it. I love it. Well, Nicole, thank you so much for being a part of the Bellwether thank Senior Living you. Podcast. And, and once again, Nicole is, if you if you joined late or if you've been listening off and on, uh, she's the founder and, uh, and CEO of Will Gather, uh, which is dedicated to enhancing the well-being of the uh, aging community, equipping older adults, family care, caregivers, elder care professionals with valuable information and resources. They've got a boutique, a podcast, uh, amazing stuff, great conversation. And uh, we look forward to just seeing all the great things you're doing in senior living, Nicole. Thank you. Likewise, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, for producer, engineer, Julie Montoya Houston, for uh, the voice of the podcast, Tom Watts, I'm Jeff Bell reminding everyone in the field of senior living or in life, never follow, be a bellwether. Mm -hmm.